Welcome to this Light Reading Conversation. Terry Sweeney here for Light Reading, and I am joined now by Nikki Palmer, Chief Product Development Officer with Verizon. Nikki, thanks for joining us for this conversation today. My pleasure, Terry. Happy to be here. Um, we're, we're talking many topics, but uh, our, our central theme is around uh, diversity. And um, I'm just curious, start us off by talking a bit about how you chose uh, a career in engineering and um, the role of mentors in, in that choice. Yeah, sure, I'm happy to. So, you know, there wasn't as much thought, at least for me, you know, back in the day when I was choosing um, what to do uh, with my education. My father is an engineer. My father went to Penn State, so I went to Penn State and pursued engineering. I mean, partly because I, I sort of liked math and science and was, was decent in it, but mostly because he was there. And um, I was able to see in my home what an engineer really does, uh, what it means. And I had a supportive environment. My, my mother told all of her children that they could do whatever they wanted if they just tried hard and, uh, and worked at it. So um, I was lucky. And, uh, you know, I pursued my degree, graduated, joined what at the time was Bell Atlantic and, and have been here ever since. Um, throughout the process, by the way, that will be, I'm sure, uh, a rarity uh, going forward. And I think it is already that is being with one company for your entire career. But with Verizon, I've had so many different great opportunities. It felt like changing jobs and, and careers all the time. And I had good mentors, you know, that started really with my family system again, that I was I was lucky. And then in Verizon, excuse me. Good mentors. Oh, yes. I mean, thankfully. Right. I mean, it started really back in uh, in high school where I had a, a geometry teacher in 10th grade that I'll never forget. It was just fabulous and, and encouraged uh, me and others to, to pursue math and science. And and even at, uh, at Verizon, I've always been very uh, fortunate to be in a company that, um, you know, recognized uh, diversity and uh, promoted promoted talent. So um, that's a bit of my story. Uh, diversity is very much in the ether these days, and rightly so. Um, uh, our our understanding and certainly our definitions of diversity have 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 changed over time as well. Um, can you talk about why workforce diversity is important to you personally? Yeah, I mean it's you know we at Verizon we're about bringing new technology to life for customers and for society and. The tech sector just sadly lags so far behind the rest of the job market when it comes to hiring women. Um, the percentage of employed women, for example, across all job sectors in the United States has grown to about 47%, but the five largest tech companies only have a workforce of not even 35% women. Okay. So that's just one example. But we do know that diversity is crucial and we cannot let this new technology that is ushering in the fourth industrial revolution, we can't let that occur without having the whole population take part in its development. I mean, we're already seeing um, you know, bias that is working its way into artificial intelligence algorithms. Um, and we just, we know so much more now than what we did before mm -hmm. about how diversity of thought, but by the way, um, you know, that, that term actually, even though we, we talk about it, it is important and annoys me a little bit because you can't really have diversity of thought unless you have gender diversity present at the table. So we should not forget that diversity of thought isn't a whitewashed way of covering up uh, the numbers. We know that um, firms that have more than 50% of women on their board, they outperform their competitors, um, you know, at least 60% of the time, if you look at return on equity. Um, we also know that um, gender diversity in firms increases innovation by about six times more than firms that aren't as diverse. So the numbers are all there. We know it, but, you know, personally, I look around and I, we know the pandemic has affected women more so than men. Women, female jobs have been impacted almost 20% more by the pandemic than male jobs. And that's mostly due to responsibilities um, at home with childcare, elder care, homeschooling, et cetera. Um, and we just, 
it's a it's a terrible inequity and we are not going to reach the full potential um, that we can with the great well, with that in mind talk a bit if you would um, about how we can build and sustain the pipeline for for both girls and women um, with regard to stem careers yeah it's a it's it's a multifaceted problem, right? If there was one silver bullet, I think um, many well-intentioned companies and individuals would have this thing solved by now. Um, sometimes it's not about the job itself, but it's about supporting women in accessing opportunities for upward economic mobility generally. You know, providing training necessary to enter the fields and then supporting them when they're in the fields in terms of their advancement and being able to thrive in their longer term growth. So this all um, will go to closing the technical skills gap as well as the income uh, gap that is present with genders. So, um, you know, another interesting fact is among the women who voluntarily left the workforce due to the pandemic or over the last 18 months, 68% say that burnout was a driving factor. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to people, you know, it didn't really address your question about pipeline yet, but when it comes to the workforce, the work environment where everyone feels safe, everyone feels supported, you can be your true self. When women feel that their needs are met, they won't feel the need to move on. So that's really important. Um, about 66%, by the way, of women report that they don't see a clear path forward for them in their current careers uh, at their current companies. That's a problem. So there's so much companies need to do uh, in order to encourage uh, women to thrive in the workplace. I mean, the, the data support the, the, the dynamics that you're describing really well. Um, what can be done to reduce this pipeline loss? Well, um, there's a lot of things. I, I, I like to take it sort of chronologically um, where you start early um, because we need to solve the problem for today, but we also need to solve the problem of tomorrow. And that means supporting our, our youngest uh, future engineers and future technologists with their uh, ambition to follow their instincts and their abilities to choose careers and fields of study uh, that work for them. So we know what happens in middle school um, where, you know, there's just a downward trajectory in terms of uh, young girls that follow the, the math and science path. There's a lot of reasons for that, um, but that's a, that's a good place for early intervention. So we need to do that. We need to be sure that they have role models, whether if they're, they're not always in the home, not always lucky like I was, um, but that there's guidance and support and neighborhood, you know, it takes a village. So we need to surround them early on. And high school role models are super, super important. Um, young women need to see themselves uh, in, in the future. And that's why, um, and all of us can do more there. You don't have to be an engineer to be a great uh, example for these young women, but making connections, um, talking about careers that are so multifaceted, so, so diverse. Um, you know, we, we tend to sometimes, I think, shy away from the benefits of engineering and technology careers. Um, not only are they rewarding, but today's youth is focused on purpose. And what better way to, you know, bring purpose into your work than to, to you know, use engineering and technology to solve the world's greatest problems? Because, you know, whether it's, it's um, you know, hunger or poverty or climate change, um, all of these things, uh, these significant issues facing the world today, they will, the solutions will have their roots in technology. So, you know, being being clear about that, and also being clear that these are lucrative fields. Uh, let's not downplay the uh, the economics here uh, that are very important to to women and to women's ability to be self sustaining. So, there's a lot we could do before they even get into college. I talked a little bit about what the workplace can do, but you know, there's there's just so much more we all need to do. In that vein, talk about what Verizon is doing with regard to recruiting and retaining um, women in IT. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very, um, very proud of what Verizon is doing on this front. Um, always can do more, but at Verizon, it's our credo. So we embrace diversity and personal development, not just because it's the right thing to do, but because it's very smart business as well. Um, a few things. We have something called the Verizon Innovative Learning Program, 
where we're providing access to technology resources starting as early as that critical middle school I mentioned. And that's for all students, no matter their backgrounds, no matter their zip codes. Um, we also ensure that the teachers at our Rise and Innovative Learning Schools have access to a technology rich curriculum as well as training because let's face it, not all of our teachers are, are comfortable uh, in this new world that's changing just so, so rapidly. So we've doubled down our efforts there, um, providing, and this began back in 2012, so providing low-income students with free access, free devices, and a STEM-focused focused curriculum that's complete with teacher training. So that's, uh, that's fantastic. And we're in 254 uh, schools, I believe, right now, and we're reaching wow. almost 500,000 students. Wow. So that's one thing it's just really proud of. Expanding the scope a bit, what, what can companies business leaders, entrepreneurs do to continue to, to nurture and foster these opportunities um, for women and, and minorities? Yeah, well, I tell you, again, there's a lot. I mean, I'm very proud of what Verizon is doing, putting their you know, money uh, where the mouth is, uh, $535 million in market value towards STEM education and helping these under-resourced uh, communities really bridge the digital divide. But Outside of big programs, which are, are critical and have you know uh, the scale and the, the depth to really reach many many students, you know there's things that we all can do in the areas that we work. We have, for example, what we call women of women of Verizon, and these are panels where we have our female leaders share their personal journeys, their life lessons, how to overcome obstacles, and how to how to persevere in achieving their career goals. And I remember when we started this a long time ago, it, it was life changing actually for, for some people to really see women in positions of power as few as they were, but being able to talk about, you know, here's what I did, here's how I made it work, whether it's work-life balance or handling difficult colleagues or facing full on um, discrimination at work, here's how I did it. And it's sort of like, it's very eye-opening for students. So never underestimate um, the power of your story uh, to help other women. Um, there's a lot of other things. We have success circles that are very local and aim to create opportunities for women to build relationships um, that they need to develop their skills and advance their careers. We know how important that net networking is. We also launched Verizon's, we have a, it's called Women's Collab. And this is an effort to support um, women and minorities um, in small businesses, society at large. So as part of that platform, we're launching mentorship networks, free resources, training, all aimed at supporting women, small business owners and entrepreneurs. And again, employees want to be a part of a company that has purpose, mission, and is supportive, not just to its employees, but to the community at large. And so all of these efforts sort of come together and create the culture that we want that um, that women can thrive in. You spoke a few minutes ago about uh, how diversity um, can only foster and 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 expand uh, that that innovative spirit that so many companies struggle to to cultivate or or manifest. Um, if, if we pull the camera back a little bit more, why why is why is diversity important to to business and to economic growth as a, as a general purpose? Yeah, I mean, well, first off, you know, there's a major skill gap today. It's estimated that a third of the current uh, shortage in the labor environment is due to a skill gap between the open jobs and, and what's available in the labor force. Um, compound that with one in five students that don't graduate from high school. So limiting their possibilities for career and for life uh, success. So being able to create uh, programs that are sustainable, that connect again, back into high school, not everyone goes to college, um, but being able to have our, our future be college and career ready um, is so important. Um, businesses are struggling today to try to fill open positions with skilled, skilled talent. And it's a, it's a, it's a big problem. So, um, you know, and women, as I mentioned before, have, are dropping out of the workforce due to pandemic at a higher number than men, just compounding the issue in terms of diversity. I mean, I just come back to the basic fact that says, you know, our 
the technology in our world is like the air that we breathe. You can't live without it today. And it's moving so, so fast. The pace is only accelerating. If we do not have women taking full part in that technology, in the development of it, the deployment of it, the thought processes that go into it, um, we will not reach the full potential. So diversity is a business imperative. Um, it's one that, um, yeah, you, you mentioned earlier, it's a, it's a hot topic, of, of course it is. And it's because we don't have the people to fill the jobs, we, and we don't have um, the, the population fully represented in the tech sector, and that's what we need. Nikki, thanks for joining us for this light reading chat today. Appreciate your perspective on diversity and uh, the the history and the, the work ahead. Thank you so much, Terry. I, I would also add that if you're interested in learning more, I encourage you all to join a panel discussion that I'm taking part in with Cisco on bridging the gap for women in IT. It's on October 14th at 1.30 Eastern time. And you can visit the website uh, below on your screen here if you'd like to register. I hope you do. Great stuff, Nikki. Thanks again. Thank you. We've been talking with Nikki Palmer, Chief Product Development Officer with Verizon. This has been Terry Sweeney for Light Reading. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.